Hey guys, it's M4J here, and welcome back to the Majefries Network here on OpenCTD. Let's get the game playing, shall we? So we actually get to see some trains moving. Uh, makes a nice change. Right, so last time out, we built the third rail line. Um, I'm just looking at the image on the screen there, because I did turn down my settings for a Planet Coaster video that I recorded just a couple of days ago. It seems to be okay. It seems to be okay. Uh, anyway, last time out we built the third rail line. Um, where was it? Here it is. And we will start populating this with trains in the not too distant future. There's an HST doing its journey. I'm assuming it's still full. Yep. That's what I like to see. Trains that have got passengers on board. It means the system is working, which is always a good sign. Um, we're actually going to be working with non-electrified rail again today. Uh, we have a line over here, which I said would be used for passenger use as well as freight use. So at the moment, the only use it has is this dairy, uh, where milk, such as from this steam train here, will get delivered um, to the dairy. It then get turned into food, and then the food trains take it out again. I've already built one station here. This is part of our first cross-country line. We're going to have a few of them on the map but this is most definitely uh, the first and I'm going to pause the game for this because we're not really going to see much train movement where we are here anyway I'm going to start building this cross country line now this cross country line the reason it's going to be called so and it's cross as in X country line um, because I, I like to base my names off real life names but put just a little bit of a difference in there so that there's uh, a enough of a difference essentially you don't want to end up getting in trouble for uh, for stealing names, etc. I'd like to think that I avoid that anyway, but you can't be too careful these days. Anyway, um, the reason this is going to be the cross-country line, or at least the first of many cross-country lines, is it's going to link lots of different main lines together. Uh, so it's already linked up to the Great Western Line, just to the s southwest of Woolworth, I think it is. I need to remind myself of that. That's not the right place at all. Also makes change that I'm doing it as a live build. Yeah, just to the southwest of Weworth and just to the northeast of Plindon. Both of these stations are going to be crucial on the cross country network, which is why um kind of why this line existed in the first place. It just happened to be there was a dairy nearby as well. But uh it's gonna be a bit like the, the cross country line that we have up from uh, from Sunnington and in fact it will be connecting up with that line um, somewhere in the hills although I've currently got it planned to join up at one point just after Mewood but I think the the slope of the land is a bit weird there um, so I might move it now I think I said this before um, when I was looking at trains if I go to available trains the class 170s do seem to exist on the game now. I'm not sure whether they did before. Turbo Star. Now, in real life, there are 170s with cross country livery. This, well, these ones don't seem to have cross country livery, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I mean, there's lots that are missing on this list. The, the 165s aren't on here. The one that really annoys me, and I wish that someone would get on onto this because I know I certainly can't I'm nowhere near good enough to be able to do this but um, the electric trains so we've got these third rail ones the uh, the Wessex the Desiros um, the Javelin is overhead as well and then you've got the Pendolinos which are all overhead the Valaro the North of London the three capitals Eurostar the APT and then you've got all the DEMUs and DMUs but we don't have things like the class 365 we don't have the 700s we don't have uh, the 465, we don't have any of the networkers, let's put that, put it that way. We don't have the 321s. Now I know that you can use these, uh, not these, these, as guides. So for example, this is a 321, that's a 313, that's a 325. And then you've got the Electra Stars, which are the 450s, the 350s, the 385s, I want to say. Um, and loads of other ones like that. 
but these aren't fixed formation and I mean these hold 70 passengers but that's 35 each doesn't seem very high to put that in context so these hold 35 passengers each which means um, a three car train would be 105 passengers so it's a three car train 105 passengers this is a three car train 207 passengers almost double down here 174 the uh, the Zyros 169 um, did I use this one? yeah 207 I mean even these this is a super sprinter which is a two car train 163 passengers five car trains 200 actually that's quite low but then these are express trains uh, the Javelin which is six car 340 so you can see how the ratio just is totally off so I w really wish there were more electric fixed formation trains but there just doesn't seem to be which is a real shame uh, so if there's anyone out there who can make trains on a uh, open TTD a little project for you to try out there and see how you get on anyway I'm not gonna moan too much there's no point moaning too much about it um, what I am gonna do here is try to find a way to get this line over this line without causing too much of a mess because basically I want trains to be able to come down through Monningpool Falls and up towards Sunnington because that's going to be one side of my, my three-sided triangle um, which I don't know why I insisted on saying it was three-sided all triangles are three-sided otherwise it wouldn't be a triangle that's not the point point is um, put these tunnels in the right spot the point is I want this to, this line to connect up or the cross-country route I want it to be able to connect up with as many different main lines as possible now I've already said that Denston Carnegie is going to be one of the hubs for um, cross-country and I have actually figured out a way of making it one of the main hubs for the cross-country line which I think is really really cool um, quite a uh, quite pleased that I've managed to solve that problem because that was going to be a bit of a headache for me because I said it and even as I was saying it I was sort of thinking it's not going to work but I found a way that it is going to work so that's excellent news right I'm going to lift this land up to there and then I'm going to put a strip across like so and then a bit there so he's going to go across here Let's do truss. No, let's just do a tide arch. It's much easier. I think the tide arch bridges are very, very pretty bridges. Most definitely. They make it all worthwhile. Um, and then we're going to connect like so and like so. We're then going to connect these two up. And then here, I'm going to go down and across this way. Um, I think I might actually get rid of this fertilizer plant. I worked something out quite recently. I was looking at my finances and I was trying to work out what other was. Because as you can see, other is very big and it costs us money some years. You can see here it's larger than usual and it costs us money. I worked it out. Other is when you place down industries. If you fund an industry, you do literally fund that industry. You you pay for all of its running costs and everything. I'd never noticed that before, and yet I think it's such a cool thing that they've put into the game. It's an absolute nightmare if you're not earning that much money. Um, you do have a, a real risk of going bankrupt. But if you are earning enough money, um, like I am right now, it's a really cool thing to have. So uh, if anyone else out there was wondering what that was all about, there's your answer. It is quite cool. I just wish I'd known about it before so I wasn't sat there scratching my head wondering what on earth all my money was being spent on. Because believe me, I mean, I, I didn't have sleepless nights over it or anything like that, but it was incredibly frustrating to just constantly see my money being hemorrhaged away. Um, and that was the, the reason why. So as I say, I'm very pleased that I've managed to work that out. Because uh, that was causing me just oh, unbelievable unbelievable anguish is uh, is probably the right phrase um, what am I doing here oh I know what I'm doing here 
I'm connecting that up to there and I'm connecting that up to there and that is how if I remove this hotel this is how, oh hang on oh, yeah, I can fix it, no problem this is how the cross country line is going to link up to the coastal line it's not really connecting up to the western reaches line this way around um, mainly because I don't plan on running any non-electrified trains through um, through the western reaches line it just it won't work so there's no point even trying it really okay if I put a path signal there in fact let's do this the way around it's always easier to put the waypoint first and then put the path signal there we are and I'll signal the rest of this a little bit later on right Guntward I think it would be easier if we had a bridge that went across the bay I can see the track going through there like that I think what I am actually going to do is make this a single track bridge um, and then just put a passing loop or not passing loop, double track either side and then just have the bridges single track hopefully we don't run that many trains that it becomes an issue um, I want to run just enough trains so that the track doesn't get overgrown but not enough trains that they all end up blocking each other off trying to get across this bridge because that would be an absolute nightmare I've had a lot of problems with trains recently uh, almost to the point where I so nearly did another s network reset on some lines because it was so just everything was not working properly uh, and no idea how frustrating that can be the worst culprit still is the guard city eastern line because I keep catching the DMUs running on the express lines um, at a certain point and they should not be there and it's incredibly frustrating because I keep checking the signalling and I can't see anything that's wrong with the signalling so I cannot for the life of me work out why these trains are insisting on running on the wrong lines and normally I would say oh it doesn't matter too much we'll leave it but it kinda matters on that line especially as I'm planning on running cross country trains on that line as well but what really bugs me about it is the uh, the DMUs their top speed is 87 miles an hour so I have the timetabling their maximum speed is 90 miles an hour essentially uh, the HSTs and the Meridians their top speed is 125 miles per hour so there's a 35 mile per hour difference uh, there's actually a 38 mile per hour difference if you if you work it out properly so there's a constantly fast trains being held up by these DMUs uh, which is not good because it's currently running pretty much a threadbare service I haven't even upped the uh, the frequency of the trains yet to what I actually want the line to be able to carry and already it's not working the signaling system isn't working properly plus we've got freight trains that run through there which I think their top speed is somewhere between 75 and 90 miles per hour as well but it just becomes a huge pain in the neck trying to fix all that um, almost to the point where I just can't be bothered with it really um, it gets really really frustrating although one thing I would also say um, it's kind of a shout out really is a big thank you to everyone who's offered suggestions on the um, trying to get trains to reverse thing I will show you on the screen right now actually kind of what I said before disallow train reversing in stations that's currently switched off so it says if enabled trains will not reverse in non-terminus stations even if there is a shorter path to their next destination while reversing uh, and as you can see I've got that switched off so trains should be able to reverse in stations pathfinding for trains is yet another pathfinder uh, which is the recommended one or there's NPF which I don't actually know what that is uh, disallowed train reversing it's off pathfinder for road vehicles and ships that's not really important so if there are any other pathfinders um, that would be cool I, mean, I could have a quick look uh, new GRF settings 
check online. No, not there anyway. So yeah, I'm still a bit stuck on that one. Um, someone did suggest uh, again. I I I appreciate improvisation. That's one thing that I, I tend to do myself. Um, so my favourite suggestion on those lines was someone who said, uh, why don't you just build central reversing sidings like they have on London Underground. And I do in a lot of places. Um, actually, ironically, I do it a lot for my metro stations where there are services that terminate. Uh, so we, we are thinking the same thing, which is a good thing. But uh, the reason I can't use that on the majority of my main lines is because I have my express lines run through the center. So that means the express lines would then have to deviate around the st storage sidings and it sort of defeats the point of having them in the first place. Uh, so it was a good suggestion. I'm not not by any means saying it was a bad suggestion. It's just unfortunate really that um, because of the way I build my main lines I can't always put central storage sidings. It's kind of one of the reasons why in the last episode because we had the uh, the slow lines off to one side rather than running either side of the express lines, I was able to put those little storage sidings at the end of the platform um, to be used by both lines really. And those ones I don't mind. It actually works quite well. Um, I use it on my circle line on the metro and it, as I say it works quite well. Trains don't really get in one another's way. All trains that run into those platforms are terminating anyway, so there's n it's not like a terminating train is getting in the way of a, a through train. It's just incredibly annoying that I can't do. Um, I can't have trains terminating in non-terminus stations. It's just really frustrating that I have to put these little extra storage sidings in. So I'm still welcome to suggestions. If anyone has any other ideas as to what might fix it. I will have a look and see if there are any other pathfinding tools because it could well be that. Another theory I've had is, and again I think I've said this on, on camera before, I know that Joker sometimes puts lines of code into the game that aren't necessarily um, noticeable, like there's no actual option to switch them off, on or off or anything like that. A good example was the game crashing um, that I was having the problems with before. The, the reason behind that was um, Joker has it set up that uh, I'm trying to remember the exact terminology that he used. It was to do with pathfinding. It always tries to find a route for a train. And because it couldn't find a route for a crash train um, Oh, that's right. That's right. He said um, it's because it's always trying to find routes for trains. Um, it's always trying to find what the next order is. And because crash trains no longer have a next order the game couldn't really work out what to do with it, so it was crashing. That was the reason behind the crash. Incredibly frustrating um, that it was happening. And because there's no sort of visible reason as to why it was happening, it's only because I described the problem that we were able to get to the bottom of it. I say we. I didn't really have much to, much of a part to play in it. It was all Joker's doing, really. But um, he was able to get to the bottom of what the problem was from my description and was able to fix it for me. Um... So I have a feeling that there might be some other sort of little lines of code that he's written in the game uh, to keep it functioning, which could perhaps be influencing pathfinding. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, I did some Google searches as well, and I couldn't really find what the problem was. I couldn't really find a way to describe the problem enough so that I'd be able to find an answer. Because uh, I kept typing in trains not reversing at stations, and it was literally people... Um, who hadn't well, hadn't figured out that the setting was there and, and had it switched to the wrong setting which I don't have that problem my setting is switched to the right setting but the train still wasn't terminating or wasn't reversing so uh, I have a it's a real bugbear of mine is when I'm trying to find a, a solution to a problem um, Google is not always my friend because I will type in the problem and because of the way the Google algorithm works and because there's you know things like AdSense where you can get your or AdWords I think it actually is where you can get your search result or you get your website to appear higher up the search result I end up with just getting a whole list of things that aren't even related to the problem that I've searched for 
uh, they might contain similar words or phrases but they never sort of describe the problem in the same way that I have and it's just so frustrating because it's what should be a sort of quick 10 second Google search and then testing out different people's suggestions turns into a two and a half hour search because there's, the results keep coming up that aren't really helping you with the problem you've got but then I suppose what the problem I have got is quite a niche problem I could be the only person in the world with that problem for all I know um, so yeah that's why I've sort of opened the forum up to you guys if anyone knows what the problem might be uh, by all means get in touch because chances are you have the answer to the problem um, that I've been looking for right I want to join the lineup before this viaduct because I love this viaduct it's absolutely gorgeous I'm not a big fan of this viaduct I've a good mind to actually redirect the line around like that and there's another viaduct somewhere yeah this one actually I don't mind this one because it does go over the town so it serves its purpose quite well but uh, this viaduct does get in the way a lot so I am actually going to move or I should rebuild the track first really and then get rid of the bridge so the simple fix is you drag this over here you drag this here um, you then pull this right way across like so and like so and then at the tunnel mouth here um, you draw that one that way and you draw that one that way and there we go right now this is handy here or at least one of these is this one is probably the handy one because it now means that I can build my line up gradually from where is it here I could build my line up gradually as it goes through here and then have it join up over here which is a huge help I'm trying to remember what my signal distance is here I think it's 11 What's that? That's two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, it's twelve apart. So the signaling must be set to thirteen. So if I quickly disconnect both of these and also disconnect those really quickly then uh, this should connect up like so in fact I don't need this one anymore so I'll get rid of that I will connect up this one again really quickly just so the train can run off of the bridge probably means the one in the tunnel or is coming up how well are these doing in terms of carrying passengers yeah they're full that's fair enough uh, we will be increasing the uh, the service intensity because as you can see the tracks are overgrown which tells me that there are not enough trains running on this line at the moment it's one of the reasons why I keep overgrown tracks on because it's a useful tool alright I can now demolish both those bridges connect this up again and then here you're a pathfinder, you're a pathfinder and then I can slowly bring the track down to a more realistic height it's a bit of a staircase this I'm not a huge fan of the way I've built this line actually particularly over here at Mewood because you could tell I was sort of running out of space when I connected it all up it wasn't the smartest move it wasn't the worst could have been a hell of a lot worse but it also wasn't the smartest it has made my life quite difficult in certain ways uh, especially here I mean I could fill in a lot of this land actually because to be honest with you a lot of this is a hell of a pain to work with But yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the way that I've got the uh, the stepped tracks. Whoops, particularly 
um, after Honningville. The way that steps up the hill. I didn't do a very good job with that either. The point is, it's supposed to look natural. It would have probably been easier just to do a big solid slope. But the reason I, I sort of vetoed that idea um, was because I just had this horrible feeling that I'd end up running freight trains on the line and they would just stall. And the last thing you want is a train going one mile an hour. Like I, I have no plans of running freight trains on this line, which is why I feel like I can do this. But if it wasn't for that, I, I certainly would not be building the line like this, because it just would not work. Uh, I should have done that. Uh, there we go. This side is a bit more difficult to do. Uh, here I'll do a little bit more. Just do a bit of random terraforming. And it makes it look like it's part of the uh, the natural slope of the land. Like so. And like that. That looks a lot better. This side is a little bit more tricky, but I suppose it's not as important right now. Uh, the next problem I have is how am I going to get underneath this main line here? I think I am going to do just that and go underneath it. Well, saying that, let's take this back a little bit. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, that's not ideal. Would that do it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then it's almost a straight line across. We are going to go up this way as well, so I'm going to do a little bit of flattening. I say this this is the difficult part of the line. Um, I was quite happy with when I built the uh, the northwest trunk line, how I managed to make it climb up the hill. Again, I, I used the step method, which is a bit odd, because I, I don't like one version of it, but I do like another version of it. Uh, you know, make of that what you will, but I liked the fact that it, it was relatively flat for the majority of its route and then only towards the end as it gets towards Sunnington you climb up that last big hill over the top and then down to the coast. Kind of reminds me of um, uh, when I used to go to the seaside as a kid and it would be just like that. You'd, you'd feel like you're climbing up loads and loads of hills. Uh, I used to go to Western Supermare quite a lot. and going along the motorway you feel, you feel like you're going through all the hills and things like that and then right at the end you just dive down towards the uh, towards the coast it definitely it feels more like that than anything that that particular line especially this section here because you go uphill 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 um, there's another section back down here isn't there where it feels like you're going uphill a lot and then you climb up all the hills here and then you go through the tunnel and you come out the other side of the tunnel and the sea's right in front of you and then you just descend the hill down to the seafront uh, and then you actually run along the last little bit of coastal line before you get to Sunnington I like that, I think it works really nicely I keep distracting myself in this episode by talking about pointless things like that but uh, I guess that's what I do best Tell you what, I'm actually going to build this as a bridge just so we're not going down and then up again because it's a bit of a waste. Uh, we'll build a little viaduct, I suppose. Again, I feel like um, bridge choices. I like the G new GRF, I think it's really cool. I just wish there were more bridge choices. But uh, alas, no. Right. We're nearly at the end. And then we can start working on uh, the boring bits like signalling. So we're actually going to plan out... Um, that I need to write that on my episode plan as well so I remember to do it. I 
I haven't noticed that many people um, looking at the episode plans now. Uh, I don't know whether that's just because you trust me or you you happen to be on there when I'm not. I'm on there quite a lot looking at different ideas, mainly because I'm trying to come up with ideas and I don't always um, get to actually put them down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends really. Right, that is where the signals are going to go here. So we're going to follow this line along. As we know, this line goes up towards Beffingway and uh, Warnbridge uh, via the viaduct, which I, I really must give a name to. If anyone wants to name that viaduct, you're more than welcome to su uh, can't speak. You're more than welcome to suggest some ideas. Uh, as usual, the best ones will be chosen, or the uh, the least worst in <laughs> in some cases depends really on uh, what ideas people might have. Um, I'm actually going to move this signal to this side of the uh, level crossing and with this one I'm going to move it there because there's going to be a station built here at Guntwood um, and then over this side I mean we can get away with just putting it here I suppose I can't imagine there's going to be a queue of trains here so we should be able to get away with that uh, oh yeah we've got a little section here as well so let's put a signal there, a signal there that one's there, so that's fine, and we'll put one there. Uh, so if I convert this back just for a second, so that I could build that across. Same with this one. Again, I don't think there'll be much of a problem of having a signal here, because trains should just go straight across. Um, all this bit looks good. And then we get to here where it's all been signalled anyway. So that's good. So yeah, we now have a link between... I mean, we, we already had a link technically between the Western Reaches and the Great Western Line uh, via the coastal route. We do now have one via this line as well. So you get to see that. Looks quite nice. So my plan... Um, this now connects all the way over to this line which in turn connects all the way over to the main line at, uh, actually I need to build that junction over at Honningville as you can see here the tracks go past but don't they connect via the station but they don't connect physically uh, I would quite like to change that maybe here would be a, a good candidate um, so that you bypass the station and actually join up here and then you go via this way and you connect up with the main line here uh, just so we don't have to worry about getting in the way of the freight line. Either that or we build a connection across here maybe and that connects up. Actually that could work. Yeah, I think I might do that actually. So if I take this back to there like so and then over here Uh, like that, like that, like that, and like that. And then here it steps down quite nicely to the edge. And we're just going to build it along. I think I might put a tunnel here. I think, wasn't this the original connection that we had anyway? It was along this way. And then I changed my mind and decided to connect it a bit lower down. But, yeah. There it is, connected up. And we'll do the uh, formality signaling. So that's now all connected up. Um, I'll probably worry about waypoints and stuff a little bit later on. Just having a look to see how this would connect. I think like that. And then like that, and then like that. So it's kind of all stepped across. There we go. Right, so that's another uh, main line that's now connected to the cross-country route. I mean, this line technically is, but it is over at um, Warnbridge and Beffingway. It wasn't over here. 
so now it is. We don't really need a connection going this way because you could just take the main line here anyway so uh, that's okay and it also means that trains can now come up here to Nothingburg Springs which is incredibly busy and has very few passenger trains that actually stop here right now so we are going to be working on that uh, possibly in today's episode actually I might put some trains out I don't want to put too many trains out and that does remind me actually I've got to give you my next episode 200 spoiler so I think what I've said so far is going to involve a big construction project um, it will also involve lots of trains I think I said that as well uh, the number of trains will have a meaning um, at the moment it's a fixed number but it could end up being an approximation depending on uh, how the uh, the episode pans out but that's that's the uh, the next little spoiler there for you the number of trains that we will be putting into the the uh, network has a significant meaning um, I'm just doing some thinking I mean this ends pretty much finished now so I can start looking at the other end if I follow Where's the line? Is it this one? Oh yeah. Getting lost. Okay. So Plindham is also going to be part of our cross country network. Uh Guard City will have some cross country trains, but not too many. Now if I follow the line this way, and I follow the line this way, and then if I follow the line this way, this is where it becomes proper cross country. And I've already built this little spur line here, which takes you underneath um, Fort Flunwood. That was a, not really a smart place to put that signal, to be honest. Takes you underneath Fort Flunwood, or the, the approach lines to Fort Flunwood, and connects up again over here. Um, I do feel like this line in particular we should have a connection between the slow lines and the fast lines um, so that the because I imagine if we're using the cross country um, HSTs they're going to be on the fast lines but at some point they're going to have to cross over to the slow line to be able to get through and then through here Fort Flunwood by the way is also going to be part of the, uh, the cross country um, network. I mean all of the main stations on all of the lines that we've looked at so far are going to be part of it. Uh, it just makes sense to do it that way. I think if I move this one over like that just so there's a little bit more of a gap between the signals. So there, there, there and there. Um, and I suppose do I have waypoints here? I don't think I do no I'll probably have to come back and do this if I remember uh, but we'll have something very similar on this side as well we'll have a, a crossover point but if I follow this line over here is going to be another bit of the cross country. This goes up towards Dinpool and connects up at Dinpool East. We are going to have to destroy uh, quite a lot of town to get that back in. Uh, this incidentally goes down towards Great Rinston. Is it Great Rinston? No, it's just Rinston. I always call it Great Rinston. That's not its name. In fact, I think I have uh, oh, the Excelsior train. This little thing that I probably will get rid of actually because I can't imagine I'm going to use it. I think Excelsior is a name I'm going to stick with though, but not for that particular service. Anyway, if I come back over here, so the line from Fort Flonwood is this one here. It's going to come along like this. Um, it's going to be a big sort of junction with loads of different stations here. But if I follow this across this way and then keep following this line here, it ends up joining up with the Great Eastern line and runs all the way down not that way all the way down to Denston Carnegie the hub of the cross country network and if I do a bit of zooming out you can see actually this is pretty much smack bang in the middle of the map 
It's a bit on the southern side, but east to west, it's pretty much smack bang in the middle, which is perfect. I love the fact you can see our um, high-speed trains. Well, they're saying that. There's one. How full are these? These don't run very full because of the uh, the station they go to. It's a bit of a hit and miss this, to be honest. The station they go to is very much still on the, s the uh, or the town at least, is very much on the small side still. So there are passengers waiting, but not very many. We will have to connect up these extra platforms soon and have the uh, the northern trunk route actually in operation, uh, which we do have planned out here. And how far away are we actually? I have a feeling we're a long way still. Oh, actually, we're not that far away at all. Okay, then. That's given me an idea. So, next episode... I might as well tell you this now. Next episode, we're going to be building... Whoop. Where are we? Uh, this is the line. So, next episode, we're going to be building from... That's Dimple. Fort Flunwood. Over this way. And we're going to start connecting up all the lines here. And I'm going to keep following this line across. Uh, yeah, and we're going to connect up with the Great Eastern, or the Guard City Eastern line here. So I'm going to put that down now. 197. Build third rail line from uh, Fort Flumwood Parkway to connect with God City Eastern Line via Din Paul connection. That'll make more sense, I think, um, when I'm actually explaining it better. Um, so the Dimple connection is well, I suppose I should give it its proper name. Uh, we'll call it the Buntborn Junction. This area here. Via Buntborn. Junctions. There we go. And then build third rail. Line from Buntborn to Dinpool. So that's next episode and then the episode after that we're going to so that's 198 now we're getting very very close to 200 um, we're going to build the rest of this line so build northern line Between what's this? Play Hat and Springs and just need to call that Play Hat and Springs. Um, I always forget the name of this station. Even it's got a really cool name, Gronwell Superior. Is it one N or two? Two. Uh, build branch lines off northern trunk line. Okay. And that second one is the really important one, actually, in my book, because we have these main lines but we don't have many branch lines that come off of them and I'll give you a really good example if I come back down uh, zoom right out for this where's God City? over here so if I come all the way over here to Great Winfield I marked out this little branch line many many episodes ago and actually that's the second part of this episode is to plan out this section. I've kind of done uh, plan out southeastern cross country line, but it's already been done. I hadn't realised how much of it I'd already done. But this line, uh, this is kind of part of our cross country line still. So we do want to 
map this out. Now what this line is going to do is it's kind of our guard city avoiding line. So it's going to go round the top of guard city and it's going to join up again with the great eastern line somewhere to the east. I haven't fully decided yet. But it's going to be built as an avoiding line so that you don't have to necessarily go into and out of guard city. Uh, I'm trying to think where a good place to be. Probably over here actually. So if I continue heading north, we could have a connection here. And then if I keep heading this way, I reckon if I just go straight across here, through there, and then slingshot my way around this way, there's the orbital road. So avoid that if possible. Um, keep heading out this way. Again, this is mostly going to be cross-country trains that are going to use this line, so uh, don't have to worry about it getting congested. And I think we can have a connection here, but also connect up over here. So I think if we carry on this way, go around the top of the hill there, and then connect up just before uh, Renningbury and that would be a good place to connect. Also, because I'm full of these ideas today, um, we slingshot around these lines but I think we should also connect up, maybe not to this line, although we could do, if we sort of come from here instead, uh, actually no that won't work, maybe we can connect up over at Flam Junction. That's probably the better route. So head down this way and connect up over here like that. And then also, because again, I'm full of these ideas, uh, come along this way and connect up near Flart Bridge. Or we can connect up over at Dompra because we've got the junction just here. But I'll leave that as the plan for now. So that will be um, probably episode 199 would be that episode. So uh, let's plan that one out as well, shall we? 199. Build cross country. Whoops. Line between Great Wintfield. Yeah, Wintfield. And was it Renningbury? Uh what line was that? Yeah. That's the one that goes back in towards God City. Yeah, Renningbury. Which probably will require a rebuild of Renningbury. Which is actually one of the problem locations. And the second one probably, the second plan here probably makes no sense. Build connecting lines to all main lines from new line. Uh, and I'll come up with episode titles at some point in the near future. So that's the next three episodes planned out. And then episode 200, I'm not going to write it on the episode plans until probably the night before the episode actually goes out. So that there are no spoilers. I want to try and keep this as secretive as possible. Uh, for no real reason other than I just want to keep it secret. I like being surprising. Right, uh, so that provides another corridor. Because at the moment, we do have a link between the Great Western and the Guard City Eastern lines. Uh, you hop on a boat. This is one of them. You hop on a boat here at GSJ. It takes you round this way to Guard Lake. So you also have a connection to Centre Rail. 
and then from Guard Lake you go via this buoy it's a buoy not a buoy I don't know why people call it buoy that's a buoy like buoyancy not bu buoyancy or I don't know anyway you go around this way and you go to GSP which is right there now I find it weird that GSP like I keep thinking the distance between there and there is almost too big to use control click but it's not the distance between there and there because the bus stations and stuff come out to here so it's only really sort of two tiles between them so that does kind of make sense you can see I've done a little bit of more decoration around GSP and built some new platforms for the Desiros we've actually got faster trains these are, have a maximum speed of 101 miles per hour but they take the slow lines whereas the um, actually I think I've done yeah I've built some new platforms at GSMI as well uh, to try and get more trains through so the fast trains use these four platforms here and that means that these five one two three four yeah five are now used by stopping trains I do need to bring out some more services it's kind of the reason why I said about building more branch lines because we don't have many uh, especially on the western reaches line we don't have any branch lines so I feel like here from from Wenfingfield we could have a huge branch line that spans off this way and connects up all these big towns especially this one here because it's got the, the tramway but it hasn't got any rail connections and we can have it come up this way and maybe even connect up here we'll have to see that'll have to be after episode 200 mind um, oh yeah that's what I've shown you so these are the one, class 185 desiros which I'm, I'm quite happy that it's got these in but I wish it would have the other desiros uh, especially the overhead electrified one so the 350s the 450s are the third rail but the 350s are the overhead ones London Midland used them and Transpennine Express used them and yet the game doesn't have them which is a bit of an inconvenience but these services there's an all stopper and there's a um, semi fast this is the semi fast one um, there's also a couple of new stations on this route I think this one is new the old one is here the new one is here so it connects up with some faster trains also Wooworth has a new station here Wooworth West uh, which isn't that popular right now but it might be in the future and then um, if we come down here they terminate in the bay platforms up here these trains so these are actually Trans Pennine Express because that's the only route really that the 185's use I think Scott Rail might actually have a couple as well but that's still uh, it's still the first delivery and then these are the 158 express sprinters in first great western livery and their top speed is 87 miles per hour the top speed of these is 100 so going in and out of guard city the trains are faster out here in the sticks it's a bit slower I feel like that's that's more realistic uh, and then the last thing I probably would say is this branch line here I'm going to rebuild this connection because at this point here onwards so I've done it over here I've built some four track sections so that freight trains can be overtaken by uh, faster trains and I've got these two little loops here and then on the north side uh, here again I have another four track section which has worked out quite well this one's between two stations as well so the slowest passenger services go on the outside tracks whereas the APTs go through the middle and that means they're held up less and because that experiment worked really well over here where the Great Western line joins up the coastal line to head south um, I'm going to create this is all going to be four track main line all the way down the coast uh, and especially on this section here because the two lines they're basically be almost like an eight track main line running side by side um, just this little section here and then the coastal line goes back out on the coast and the third rail goes back inside inside inland Let's use the correct term shall we um, and then I can't believe I haven't planned this out I feel like I should plan this out now as well so new I mean this bit's fairly obvious it's going to go up here it's going to go inland on this side here um, 
probably going to go over there as well and then here there is going to be a connection somewhere between the third rail and the overhead but it's mostly going to be for diesel trains to use otherwise you'd have to I always think yes there are trains that can switch voltages while moving and I know the new bi-mode trains in the uh, the Intercity Express program will be able to switch between diesel and electric whilst moving but I always feel like if you're going to switch from overhead to third rail you should do it while stopped because if the if the pantograph fails to lift or if the the uh, the shoe fails to lower uh, you're going to be a bit stuck especially when you're going at like 100 miles an hour and then you suddenly realize your pantograph's not working bad time to find that out so I'll be uh, I'll be making sure that the trains are stopped before they make the switch over so I could build a bit of dual voltage and have a station where a switch over is made or uh, I just have it as diesel only because it's far easier Right, there's a lot of industry down here. We might have to build another freight terminal here. And I quite like the idea of having the track go on a little shelf between those two towns. As you can see, it's not going to be four track all the way down here. Some of it might still be two track. But um, there, there's better candidates for interchanges and all that kind of stuff down here with other lines joining from them inland. I like the idea of the line coming around here as well. That looks really cool. We must be getting near the end now. Oh, I'm going to have two lines here. I'm going to have this one that goes round and joins up again. And I'm going to have this one that's just going to go straight across and connect up with over there. So fast trains will go straight across, slower trains will go all the way around. That's quite a nice idea. Um, We'll have to build a big station in the middle of that city, uh, and that will probably be the southern terminus, actually, of the uh, of the coastal route. That being said, um, if I do another new line, actually, from here, if we loop up and around, so just to say we have another town there, and then down, we'll have a southern coastal route, because I'm sure somewhere yeah over there we have another line that comes down from guard city i believe so that'd be good might even have to build a high speed line that comes down to that southern point so if i do that to there i like the idea of all trains that leave this station will go north and then curve around and head in the, in the direction that they're supposed to Anyway, this, uh, this uh, episode is an hour long. It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be sort of a quick build. Um, there is a reason why I'm not putting trains out on the line right now. It is to do with episode 200. I'm sure that some people might have even figured out what today's hint has to do with episode 200. Um, as I say, I try, I'm trying not to give too much away. I hope you guys can understand that. I know there will there are probably be some people that are just dying to know what's going to happen. You'll find out soon. It's only a couple of weeks away. Um, I think what's happening is today is Friday and it's episode 196 so 197 will be on Monday 198 will be next Friday 199 will be the Monday after that and then not that Friday but the Friday after so a week and four days afterwards will be episode 200 so um that's me sort of giving you a heads up as to what the schedule is going to be uh, and all of these lines that we've been building will all come together to form episode 200 so stay tuned for that until then guys and until Monday thank you very much for watching don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series drop some comments down below for ideas for future episodes uh, I think most of them will be taken after episode 200 because my ideas I've still got loads but they tend to run a bit dry after big sort of momentous episodes because I spend all of my ideas building up to that big occasion and then afterwards I run a bit uh, you know I, I lose some of my inspiration so that's when they're most appreciated uh, so do leave some episode uh, suggestions down below also head over to the naming list because we will be doing a big episode in the very near future with naming I know I keep saying I'm going to do some off camera I never quite get round to it I'm sort of debating whether to do it off camera or on camera because I want you guys to know that your suggestions are being chosen 
Uh, so it's all well and good you going on the name suggestion list and then you see there's a little black box next to your suggestion and you know that it's been t taken but you don't know where it is on the map. That doesn't sound very fair. So I, I will probably end up doing it on camera. Uh, but keep giving suggestions because especially for episode 200 there's going to be a lot of construction, a lot of new towns, a lot of new stations, a lot of new lines. They all need names. So do, do, do head over to the suggestions list. Um, I am going to actually set up a suggestions list for mainline naming as well. Uh, so you can leave some suggestions there as to what you want them to be called. But uh, Apart from that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. As I say, there's a lot of big stuff coming up soon, so now is as good a time as any to subscribe. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.